Welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today we are finally getting the engine started up with our Pennzoil in engine number one and Supertech in engine number two. We're going to be using one cup of oil in each engine. I have two separate cups so that no oil will be mixed. It will be purely Supertech in one engine and purely Pennzoil in the other one. Now again, these are all the same rating, weight, everything like that. We'll be running both engines on high for around five hours, which will give us some pretty good oil that's, that's starting to change color and break down a little bit. And we actually can see a difference between new oil and oil that would be considered about halfway uh, through its life cycle based on these engines and how long the instruction manual says that you should be running your oil. So I wasn't gonna mention this, but it is very weird. So I opened the SuperTech and it had a kind of a weird smell to it. And I didn't think much of it because I don't normally smell engine oil a lot. And oftentimes when you smell it, it's all over you because you just changed your used engine oil. But it had a very familiar smell and it smells burnt already. And so I, I checked out the Penn's oil. Penn's oil just smells like new oil. This SuperTech smells burnt. It's kind of hard to explain, but it just, it just kind of threw me off a little bit when I popped the cap off the SuperTech that it, it's, got a very, it's got a very strong, weird, almost used oil smell already. So, but as you can see, it's brand new, so shouldn't have a problem with it. We're going to get these in the engines and get them started up. So one thing that I did last time off camera that I didn't show anyone and I've actually had a couple questions about was uh, the actual RPM of the engine. Now this right here I measured out to make sure that it's the exact same as the other one. Now I had this measured on the first two engines as well. So far all four of them have come with the exact same distance. So this is 15 sixteenths to the end of this screw where the screw kind of rounds off at the head. The very end of that to this is 15 sixteenths, so almost an inch. So I do check that to make sure that the engines are running as close to the same RPMs as I can get them without attaching a tachometer to them. So here we are a day later. I did have to allow the engines to run on two separate days so I didn't make the neighbors mad that I was just letting them run uh, for hours and hours. So I kind of had to split it up into a couple of days. And in the meantime, I went shopping and I bought some new Tupperware. So this yellowy green will be Pennzoil and this light blue will be Super Tech. And we do have our oils here that we're gonna be splitting up. So here is the Super Tech and here is the Pennzoil. This is a used oil that we will be using for our bench test. So we're gonna get these split up into these little cups, get the ones frozen that need to be froze, get the ones inside that need to be room temperature and we will be warming up the other ones. Now, unfortunately with these being the colors that they are, it's difficult to see where they started and where they ended uh, comparatively. So we're gonna be grabbing a paper towel here so we can see the oil against the white surface. So here on the bottom, we have the SuperTech new and SuperTech used and the Pennzoil new and the Pennzoil used. To me, this looks almost identical, these two and these two. So unlike the Amsoil and the Mobile One where the Amsoil actually started lighter and ended up darker, which I found was kind of surprising, it looks like these two have started out and ended basically the same. To me, that would be uh, no difference between the two. All right, and then for the bench test, we are going to just be doing one Pennzoil per test and one super tech per test. I got a couple comments saying that the bench test last video were kind of boring, which I totally agree and totally understand. The reason I was showing everybody the footage that I was was to show that I was actually doing the tests and not just making them up. So I will still be recording everything, but for right now, it looks like we'll just be doing, I haven't decided yet, but we'll just be doing a couple pens oil per test. I don't know if we'll just do room temperature or cold, whatever it is. And then we'll be doing the same ones for the super tech 
uh, so that everybody can still see what I'm doing, but I don't show every single test for every single oil. And once we're done with our bench test, we'll go get our lubrosity test by putting oil in the engines, draining them out, and then letting them run with whatever oil has managed to stay in there. Now, right before we start our bench test, I stated that the SuperTech smells burnt. It almost smells used when it was new. Well, it gets worse when it's used. It smells like burnt oil and gasoline almost. And I thought, well, maybe the engines are making the oil smell like gasoline. So I smelled the Pennzoil and the Pennzoil doesn't smell like gasoline. So for some reason, this oil smells burnt when it's new and then gets worse and then starts to smell a little bit like gasoline mixed in with it. So again, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on with SuperTech. Maybe it's a, I don't know, can you recycle oil? Is this, uh, is this oil that's been, uh, when you return oil to the stores and stuff like that, can you actually go through and, and make it usable again? This might be recycled oil. I'm, I really don't know. If you know the reason to why the SuperTech is smelling the way it is, uh, leave a comment down below. And I did run this by some other people because I wanted to make sure it wasn't just me and my nose. So I, I asked some family members and they confirmed that this does smell uh, very different than the Pennzoil. Pennzoil smells like new oil, doesn't smell any different, and this smells burnt. And my dad, who knows cars really well, again said the same thing, that this smells weird. In fact, he told me, if it smells weird, uh, then stop smelling it. So I appreciate the input from my dad there, but again, if you, if you know why this would smell this way or have any idea, uh, please let us know in the comments below because I'm very curious. All right, everybody, well, that wraps up our bench test of the Pennzoil versus SuperTech. Uh, you'll see the sheet up here on the screen now. I haven't actually seen the numbers. I haven't reviewed the footage because I've just been trying to uh, get all these testing done. It takes me quite a while to do this, so it's, it's a bit of a grind, but I haven't actually gone through and seen the numbers yet. But you'll notice that the surface tension is missing for the hot and cold. And the reason for that is that surface tension doesn't change based on temperature. And I verified that on the Pennzoil. I did a hot and a cold just to make sure that that's actually true. And the more I think about it, the more it makes sense that yeah, the, the surface tension won't change. So you'll see this chart a couple more times because I wanna make sure everybody sees it long enough to understand everything, especially next to the other two oils that we've got here, the Amzoil and the Mobile One. So I appreciate everybody for watching. Like, comment, subscribe as always. Leave your opinions, experiences, and other comments in the comment section below. Let's keep the comment section family friendly as always. In the next video, we will be doing our torture test and our teardown to see the difference between Pennzoil SuperTech. Then we'll also be able to compare them to the previous two that we tested, Mobile One and Amsoil.